Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and I think there's three questions that I get asked all the time. Uh, what phone am I using? How do I make money on YouTube? And what's the best laptop? Well, to be honest with you, there's no such thing because any one of these could be the best laptop for you. And then there's the question of whether you can actually afford it. So instead, here are my top 10 tips to help you find your best laptop. And if you do find this useful, and uh, hopefully you do, then a cheeky little like and subscribe will be lovely. Okay, so first up, do you really need to spend top dollar on the latest 2021 laptops with the newest tech? Does it really make much difference? Well, yes, actually. I had originally sort of researched and written this point, this tip, uh, to say no, it doesn't, because really in the last couple of years, the biggest jump we've seen is in terms of graphics performance, particularly integrated graphics on the processors as well as new GPUs, of course. But aside from that, nothing really night and day. But then I went to look to see if I could actually get some good deals on, you know, older 2020, 2019 models. And unless you're happy to buy a secondhand used model off, say, eBay, uh, maybe with little to no warranty, most of the time I would say actually buying the newest one is a better bet. Take the latest Dell XPS 13, for example, 900 quid right now. And that's actually a really good price for what you get. And it's hard to find an older model that's significantly better value. So yes, if you can, buy the latest models because you'll get a better spec, it'll be faster to use, so it'll last you longer, a fresh warranty, and as I say, outside of buying second hand, you're not really paying that much more, or at least in my experience. Number two, DIY upgrades. This is really important actually, whether you're buying a new one or you've got an old uh, laptop that's seen better days, because upgrading the RAM or the SSD yourself is not only often more cost efficient, uh, but you'll get better performance and it'll give your laptop new life. So every laptop is a bit different when it comes to upgrading it and uh, well, don't even think about it with the likes of a MacBook. So make sure you do your research and maybe read a few reviews to see if your laptop is actually capable of being upgraded. They mostly are, although you can always just take the bottom off and then have a look for yourself. But I can't recommend enough what a difference a fresh, faster SSD can do or, you know, upgrading from four or eight gigs of RAM to maybe 16. Now, bear in mind that you can't really upgrade the CPU, the graphics, or the screen on laptops, at least not easily. Uh, so concentrate on those specs first when you're buying a new laptop. Maybe pay a little bit extra for the i7 or the higher quality screen. And then don't worry too much about if you only have eight gigs of RAM and 256 storage, because assuming the laptop supports it, you could always just upgrade that down the road. Okay, tip number three, and speaking of MacBooks, Apple is in this weird transition right now from using Intel's chips to their own silicon. And I get a lot of messages saying, should I get the Intel or the M1 version of the MacBook Air or the Pro? Well, here's a couple I made earlier. I've got the uh, Air and the Pro here, and this is nice and easy. 100 million percent get the M1, unless there's a very specific app or program that you use that you know will only work on Intel's architecture although you could maybe just go into an Apple store or book a genius appointment and test it there, go with the M1. You're looking at anything up to double the performance and double the battery life with almost no heat or fan noise. It's really no contest. Oh, and uh, while I've got these in hand, the question of should you go with the Air or the Pro? Well, we are expecting new refreshed Pros in September, October time, so keep an eye out for those. But right now, when anyone ever asks me this, I always say get the Air. The main difference with the Pro uh, is you have a touch bar, which rumors are they're getting rid of anyway soon, so that's not a big deal. Um, also a slightly brighter screen and a fan inside. The uh, Air is fanless, but it doesn't make that much difference. Really that fan only comes into play uh, if you're doing sort of sustained load uh, tasks, like you know rendering videos or playing games. Then you'll get a sort of more consistent frame rate or performance, less throttling. But for everyday use, I think the thousand pound MacBook Air with the M1 is the one to go for. Tip number four, and this could be a whole video by itself, but let's keep it nice and simple. What specs should you go for in a laptop? Well, very high level, I would recommend the latest 11th gen Intel i5 or i7 processors. Pair that with eight gigs of RAM and ideally five, 12 gigs of storage, and you're set. That is pretty much all you need. And actually the integrated graphics in these latest 11th gen chips and AMD CPUs are actually pretty decent. You can get away with some 1080p medium gaming in the likes of Rainbow Six Siege or Overwatch or some you know, older, less demanding games. If you do need a little more oomph though for you know, creative apps or rendering, aim for 16 gigs of RAM and ideally a laptop with a dedicated graphics card like an RTX 3050, 3050 Ti or 3060. 
for gamers, you'll definitely want a RTX 3000 series card, uh, fuller more horsepower, but also better game drivers and RTX extras like DLSS. Plus, very important for a gaming laptop, make sure you get a high refresh screen. They mostly do these days, and for around £1,000, maybe £1,200, you can get something with an RTX 3060 and a 1080p 144Hz screen, and that's probably all you need. For more serious gamers though, I think the sweet spot right now is an RTX 3070, although keep in mind your TGPs, uh, the total graphics power, because uh, different cards have different power levels. You can check out my little uh, tips for buying a gaming laptop video. Bear that in mind, but I think an RTX 3070 with a Quad HD 165Hz screen is kind of like the sweet spot right now. But, you know, depending on what kind of gamer you are, if you're into eSports, then you're going to want something with a you know, 300 hertz, 360 hertz, full HD screen to get that smoothest, fastest experience. Okay, so this is the new Samsung Galaxy Book Pro 360. And a big thank you to Samsung for partly sponsoring this video and giving me the chance to play with the 360. And it's one of three new Galaxy Books, all with the latest 11th gen Intel processors and fast Iris XE graphics, and also both Pro models boast gorgeous AMOLED screens. But, as it says on the tin, the 360 is the only one that could compete at the Olympics with its twisty-turny, fully-rotating hinge. So you can basically use it any way you like. Uh, tent mode is handy for watching movies if you're maybe tight on space, or maybe in tablet mode if you're drawing or designing, or, you know, just pretending to be important and walking around the office with it in your arm. So with this, we get a 13.3-inch 1080p AMOLED screen instead of your regular LCD, so deep inky blacks and accurate colors. And that's along with a nice big responsive trackpad, comfy keyboard, and all the latest specs, including Wi-Fi 6E, Thunderbolt 4. Plus, this thing weighs just 1.04 kilograms. And thanks to the more efficient hardware, we're looking at a solid nine hours of real-world battery life with this. So it really is the perfect travel companion. And with that 360 hinge, you've got a ton of flexibility in how you actually want to use it. And I'll leave a link below if you want to check out the Galaxy Book Pro 360. Oh, and also if you're wondering, this is actually the uh, Galaxy Book Pro, the non-360, so we've got the regular clamshell hinge here, still with that gorgeous AMOLED screen, so this is definitely worth having a look at as well. But while I've got this in hand, this uses Intel's 11th gen processors with the pretty decent Iris XE graphics, but it's not going to blow you away when it comes to gaming. So there is another way you can play games on laptops, any laptop, in fact, whether it's a MacBook or a Chromebook, and that's by streaming whether it's GeForce Now or Google Stadia through Chrome, or even something like Shadow, which gives you a full streamed Windows experience. All these do require a fairly fast and reliable internet connection, but with something like GeForce Now, you can essentially play the best, most demanding games fully maxed out on any laptop, regardless of the spec. And because it's all streamed, you don't need any of that powerful hardware in your physical laptop, it also doesn't heat up or use much battery, and it's a great alternative for gaming. Okay, tip number six, and while I do love a good laptop, I have to be honest, when I come home to the office slash dining room currently because uh, the new studio is being built, I prefer using my desktop PC, not just for the extra power because I've got a 3090 in there, but actually because of this guy. I've got a 38 inch ultra wide monitor, which makes, well, everything I do feel a whole lot nicer and easier. So whatever laptop you have, I can't recommend highly enough getting a good second screen. I mean, even a basic 24-inch 1080p for a couple hundred quid gives you so much more screen real estate, and it makes the laptop feel less confined. Now, sticking with screens, and actually one of the best trends in uh, laptops over the last couple of years is this switch to a 16 by 10 aspect ratio instead of your regular old 16 by 9. And it means you get a little bit more vertical space on your screen, which means, especially on smaller 13-inch laptops like this, it's again just a lot more comfortable to use. And so we've got the likes of the Dell XPS range, MSI Z16, and also of course MacBooks have been using that aspect for years now. Where possible, I would recommend 16x10. It's just quite a bit nicer to use. Tip number eight, and as well as that, also think about the actual quality of the screen itself, because you could have the best laptop, most powerful thing in the known universe, but if you've got a really rubbish panel that has sort of grays and sort of blacks and rubbish color accuracy and it's really dim so you can't use it outside, it's not going to be good. So most laptops are Full HD now, aka 1080p, and that's fine, but look out for color accuracy, which is usually measured by how much of the sRGB, Adobe RGB, and DCI-P3 color spectrums a screen covers. 
So if color accuracy is important to you, then look for a laptop that has something in the area of 100% sRGB and anything really above 90% Adobe RGB and P3. The higher the better. And also at least 350 nits of brightness, but ideally 4 to 500 nits so it's comfortable to use out and about. And also think about matte versus glossy, because the former is genuinely better for gamers and the latter for a more vibrant, contrasty look. But bear in mind, you'll probably end up making friends with your own reflection. Okay, number nine, and consider different form factors, because while pretty much all of these are your regular clamshells, you've also got flippy, turny, fancy 360 ones like the Galaxy Book Pro 360, which naturally comes with a touchscreen and they mostly offer stylus support as well. Or, even crazier, maybe think about a dual screen laptop. The ASUS ZenBook Duo is worth a look, or even their super high-end gaming-oriented ROG Zephyrus Duo. You are definitely paying a premium for these, uh, but if you're working or gaming on the go and don't have a ton of room for a proper second monitor, having a second, albeit smaller screen on your actual laptop can be really useful for your Discord, your media files, your emails. And I really hope this is a trend that we see more of because right now there are only a handful of laptops like this. Or, a bit of a curveball here, what about an iPad? This is the new uh, Pro 12.9, so it's got that fancy mini LED screen and the M1 chip inside. Now altogether this costs like 1400 pounds or something, so it's a lot of money, but you don't have to spend that much. The uh, fourth gen iPad Air, the current iPad Air, also is compatible with Magic Keyboard. So I think that's a great combination uh, for an almost laptop like experience. I still don't think they fully replaced it because we are on this mobile uh, iPad OS. You can't get full desktop apps like Premiere Pro. But at the same time, having this gorgeous touchscreen and obviously it's 120 hertz with the Pro models, which makes it a bit more responsive if you're going to pair it, say, with the Apple Pencil, if you're a designer, doodler, drawer kind of person. And together with the incredible App Store with obviously a ton of really good creative apps out there, this could be, depending on how you use it, a better option than a regular old laptop, so it's worth considering. Okay, last but not least, tip number 10, and try it before you buy. I think this is pretty self-explanatory because don't spend, you know, hundreds or thousands of pounds on a laptop when you might not actually like it. Go into a store uh, and try the keyboard, see if it feels good. Does the touchpad have a nice texture to it? Do the fans wear up as soon as you open a single Chrome tab? What's the screen like? A lot of stuff you won't really appreciate unless you're in person or maybe you watch a ton of reviews from people like me, perhaps or buy it and return it. In the UK, at least, we have this thing called the DSR, the Distance Selling Regulations, so you can actually buy it, test it, and use it as if you were in a store, and then if you don't like it, you can return it. As I say, don't abuse those policies, but they're there for a reason to help consumers out. So this is obviously a pretty big investment buying a new laptop, so you wanna make sure it is the right one for you. And breathe. That was it, my top 10 tips. Hopefully that was helpful, fingers crossed. If not, then we've, well, both wasted a whole bunch of time there. Uh, if you think I've missed out on any great tips, then share them in the comments below so the rest of the Tech Chap community can uh, enjoy your wisdom. And if you wanna see more from me, then as I say, a little like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. Check out the Galaxy Book Pro 360. I'll leave a link in the description below. And I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chap.